Hi, hi, hi. Okay, so I have a quick life update for you. Uh, I don't know how long this is going to be, so we'll just, we'll get into it here in a second, but I have a quick life update for you. I've got some not so great things. I've got some really great things. So we're going to dive right in. Hi, I'm Cozy. I usually like to snark about sister wives and also complain about my chronic condition here on YouTube. Uh, I, if I say anything out of pocket, just remember these videos are always just my opinions, not facts. So I don't know. I don't know. This is completely unscripted. I'm just going off the cuff. That's where we're at. All right. So let's start with the not so great news because I'd rather A, get it out of the way first and B, I'd rather move on to the really good things and end with a high note. Right? Right. Okay. So, uh, as y'all know, I've got this stupid condition, I've got this pseudotumor cerebri, uh, idiopathic intracranial hypertension, whatever you want to call it. I don't like it. I've been dealing with the symptoms of it for about 11 years, and I finally thought I was getting some more with it, and it seems like I'm being roadblocked a little bit again. Um, so, quick recap. Medication all failed. Neurologist uh, has recommended me for a shunt sent the recommendation to one doctor. That doctor never contacted me back. I tried to reach out, got nothing, got kept. And I was like, you know what, forget it. You didn't have great reviews on Google. Um, and I'm just, I'm not having it. Like, we're not going to do this. If you don't have great reviews, like, I don't need somebody scrambling my brains. So I said, okay, I'm going to call. Uh, and I called a different neurology office that had been suggested to me. Uh, by some folks at our church and I said okay I'm gonna call down there and see you know hey what the story is so I called over there just to double check hey I don't want to have this sent over to you guys if you don't take my insurance everything was good called up the neurologist said hey can you send everything over there so that's the quick recap uh, obviously they called we scheduled the appointment it was supposed to be at the end of this month and now they've called and said hey when was the last time you had an MRI? I was like, well, whatever your records indicate, uh, that was the last time. They're like, well, that was in May of 2023. Great. That's only like, I got less than a month ago. And they're like, uh, nope, that's out of date. What? If I had gone and seen them in May, everything would have been fine. But because I, it's now June, not so good anymore. Makes perfect sense, right? I get it. I understand. Doctors want to have all of the information that they can possibly have, but... This, this gets frustrating for me. This particular office is about an hour from where I live. And obviously my husband would like to be a part of this conversation because this is a big deal. We're talking about big things. So I can only schedule it at times when he's available. So I schedule the appointment, blah, blah, blah. They call and they're like, it's out of date. And I was like, okay, well, my understanding is, and I guess I could be incorrect, but my understanding and my experience is this isn't really diagnosable by an MRI. It doesn't really show up on an MRI grade, um, which would explain a lot of things because I've had MRIs and never once did we come to the conclusion that this was yeah, uh, PTC or IIH, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, we never came to those, to those conclusions. It was always stuff like, well, you seem to have a really deep sinus infection. You have an issue with your sinuses. Which I, I, now looking back, I'm like, mm, maybe that was just sort of like a uh, catch-all. I don't know. I can't say. I, I, think, I honestly think my doctors were doing the best with the information they had in front of them. Don't get me wrong. I am not angry like, oh gosh, you're so stupid. I think they were doing their very best. Anyway, so uh, I didn't even get a chance to ask. Like, why are we even bothering with this? And she's, she's like, hey, we're going to have to sit you with our nurse practitioner and move your appointment. And I'm like, okay, but I can only see you guys on very specific days because my husband needs to be available, blah, 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 blah. And she's like, well, all right. And I said, plus it's an hour drive. And like, and so they set me up in July now. And I said, well, I'm supposed to be having a therapeutic lumbar puncture done because the symptoms are getting significantly worse. And she's like, oh, well, that's going to mess everything up. Well, how is it going to mess everything up if every time I've gone for an MRI, nothing has shown up? Nothing to this effect has shown up. How is it going to mess everything up if I have 
all the information from my last lumbar puncture, where the op what was the opening pressures were and everything. How is it going to mess everything up when I have months and months? Because I see my ophthalmologist quarterly. How is it going to mess everything up when I have all the information for over a year of quarterly ophthalmologist visits? And whatever. So now I am in limbo because I don't have a clear answer on whether or not I should have the lumbar puncture done. Um, but I need the lumbar puncture done because I am having difficulty in my everyday life. And now I have to drive an hour to get handed paperwork to go to an MRI. Not for any other. That's it. That's why I have to go. I have to go drive for an hour to get handed paperwork to do an MRI, which apparently my neurologist who's close by, I guess, can't just do and have available for them, even though they all work out of the same hospital system. And then I have to drive an hour home. Then I have to get the MRI, which Lord only knows when they're going to schedule that. And then after I get the MRI, then they'll decide whether or not they're going to schedule with the neurosurgeon. All for a condition that already has a diagnosis, has a treatment plan, and is deeply affecting my everyday life. So as you can tell, I'm angry. I'm really kind of fed up because I feel like I'm getting a constant runaround. I'm really kind of fed up because I feel like every answer I get gives me like seven steps back. And so I don't know what I'm going to do. We've talked before that I don't know... I don't even know how I feel about surgery. And this was just supposed to be a consult to go and discuss these things. And now it has turned into a circus of epic proportions. And I know that I have some nurses that follow me who've been following all of this. And, and some of you might be able to give me some really good insight, but just know that I am still in the angry stage of all this. So while I will definitely appreciate your advice and I will definitely take it to heart uh, right now, I might just still want to stew in my angry, <laughs> not at you, just at the whole situation. Um, so that's where I'm at there. I am not thrilled. I am pretty ticked off, but I've always been really real with you guys about the situations and I'm ticked off. So maybe I'm overreacting. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. So let's talk about the good stuff because the good stuff is good stuff. So some of you may have caught on to the fact that my husband worked and I get to say worked nights. Uh, yes, my husband used to pull the old Christine Brown routine and work nights. He has gotten a new job and he is no longer on night shift. For the last three years, I have been, I, I've been, I've been, um, you know, he slept during the day. He was gone at night. It was just me and the kids. Uh, we only got to see him for very short windows. And even on his days off, if he only had two days off in a row, well, he was pretty much asleep for him. So we are finally now at the point where he is off of night shift and we get to actually like be normal human beings again. He has taken a position that offers so much more opportunity. Uh, things are getting so much better around here. And I am so stinking happy because I know a lot of you guys were like, mm, you know, I was saying that I had stuff going on in the background that was causing whatever. Uh, some of that was this, <laughs> that I just, I wasn't ready or couldn't talk about because I didn't have any answers. We were kind of in limbo. We didn't know what was going on. And it was causing a lot of frustration and friction in our household. I'm not going to lie. Things were really not great for a little bit. And so things are significantly better I am a lot happier. I am so excited for him. I am so proud of him that he has gotten this opportunity and that it is going to be such a wonderful, wonderful thing going forward for our family. Um, I mean, it's already being a wonderful thing, but yeah. So I have no fear putting this out there considering that it's a thing of the past now. It is a thing of the past. Uh, the night shift is a thing of the past and I love saying that. So absolutely stoked absolutely thrilled you know uh if you have any kind words for him leave him in the comments because he does sometimes check these videos and occasionally he responds to you guys down in the comments it's not very often unless he has something he really really wants to say uh in those instances he will he will reply back to you guys because he 
you know, he's a good dude. So that's really all I have as far as life updates. I am frustrated about my doctor visits. I am so excited for my husband, but it is, it is, it's new. So we we'll, we get to be excited about it. Um, yeah. So other than that, uh, depending on how long this takes to upload, you may get a Sister Wives video same day. I am not 100% sure how long this is going to take to upload. Uh, so I've got the rest of season two uh, to upload for Sister Wives. I think, I think we are on the second Christmas episode and then it'll be the Lehigh uh, Escape. I don't know what else to call it. I know Seeking Sister Wives podcast calls it the Flea High move, but I don't want to steal their thing. The, the Lee High Escape is what I think I'm going to go with. Um, so we're going to continue with that. I've got to get up some stuff done with My Five Wives, for those of you who are really interested in keeping up with, with that old show. And then I'm really, really working on trying to find a show that resonates with me to also review, um, I mean, I have HBO Max, so I'm kind of going through some of the TLC catalog, but I haven't found anything that like really resonates with me. And I feel like if it doesn't resonate with me, you guys aren't going to connect with it either, because if I'm not connecting and you're not connecting, why are any of us doing it? Right? So I'll try to get that done as quickly as possible. Um, you know, picking something, finally settling on something. Otherwise, pfft, guys, we're just going to end up reviewing old episodes of Friends because I've been watching that like it's going out of style. Oh, you can tell I'm nostalgic for, for the good old days of the 90s. But that's all I really have for you guys. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to me complain about my, my experience with this insanity. Because frankly, I just needed to get it out. Um, and I am so excited to move forward and just see where everything goes. Also, the draggling that's going to go here is about a quarter of the way done, so we won't have this big blank wall. You can make fun of me for still not having any frames on these things. That's fine. I don't care. They're super cute, and I really enjoy them. That's all that we're going to do. But I will see you guys super soon in the next video, probably same day this thing goes live. So I can't wait. Bye, y'all.